Hi guys, it's Aunt Marie. I've been feeling pretty under the weather actually this month, so that's why I've been a little behind on things. I did have my style video last week that was pre filmed video, so I just had to edit it and then, you know, put that up, you know how it goes. But I am here with the September wrap up, slash book buddy a thon wrap up, and my October TBR. I actually read a lot of books this month, which is pretty surprising. This is not usual. Well, let's get into it. Nightfall was part of my most recent book haul by Jake Halpern and Peter. Kujawinski. This story feels a bit M. Night Shyamalan-esque. I think I said his name correctly. The atmosphere is very lush, it's wonderfully done, and there are a few elements in the story that I think were pretty cool, especially this one. Well, I don't want to tell you guys that. Okay, the islands that are not islands. That's all I'll say. If you end up reading this, you'll know what I mean, but I thought that was such a cool touch. I really enjoyed it, but the thing that made it M. Night Shyamalan-esque was also the kind of thing that detracted from the story. Somehow I had the sense that I'd seen this story before. I also could figure out what was happening quite early on before the characters, and that kind of took away a bit. Another one of my reads for this month was Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. I am going to read a lot more of her work. She has two other books that are apparently wonderful, or three other works that are apparently really, really great. This story is told in two parts, Fates and Furies. We follow the husband's perspective and the wife's perspective. And it's not like, here's the same events and this is how I saw it, this is how I saw it. It's not that, it's more so how two people can be in a relationship and really one person thinks they really know the other, but they don't completely. It's not about infidelity. It's not about hating the person that you're with. It's more about just being a different person than they suspected. I really enjoyed this. People like to compare this story to Gone Girl, but the only similarity I would say to Gone Girl that this book has would, would be that you have these alternating points of view. Although they don't alternate in this story, it's just one big chunk and one big chunk. Actually, a slight, slightly less large chunk for the second half. For the wife's perspective. So I thought that was really interesting. The first follows fate. You feel like there's so much destiny woven into the story when you follow what's hap what happens to her husband who wants to be an actor but he doesn't quite make it but his, he finds his true calling thanks to his wife saying hey maybe you should just kind of not do the acting thing and write plays because she saw some of his writing and she was like this is this is your thing. This is what you're amazing at. He's kind of like the golden boy. Then the Furies follows the wife's perspective and you see kind of who she really is and it's not quite the person that he thinks she is. She kind of lets him think what he wants to think from the very beginning from when they first start dating. Her side is the fury so there's a lot more action. She's a lot more proactive as a main character protagonist in her section but it's kind of because she does have a lot of fight drive because she hasn't had it as easy as he's had, had it in life. Um, so she's kind of had to fight for her place. You feel that in the narrative. This book has been getting a lot of buzz and it's been nominated for a few things too. Maybe a National Book Award? I could be wrong, but I think it has been nominated for that. I definitely recommend it if you're interested in reading about a marriage. It's not a romantic book, but more of a dissection of what it is to be in a marriage, to be in a partnership with someone in general, and feeling comfortable, safe, enough to show your true self. Another thing that I thought was really done very well, and I actually think this is my favorite part of the book, is kind of looking at all the energy that comes into being artistic and creative and how, in a sense, it's a way to connect with people and to share oneself with other people. But at the same time, it's very easy to isolate oneself too and to push away the people closest. So I thought that was really an interesting point of the, the story. Bell Jar by Meg Wolitzer. This is a story about a girl who experiences a traumatic event and ends up at this boarding school for troubled teens in a small class called Special Topics in English? I don't know if I've got that right. In any case, the one book that they're studying is Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. While talking about their problems and writing in their journals, the students realize they're transported into another world that they decide to call Bell Jar as a play off of The Bell Jar, since that's the book that they're studying. This novel has mixed reviews. Some people loved it, some people despised it. I thought the concept of the world 
and how everyone fell into the world was really fascinating. When I was in junior high and in high school, there was a lot of insta-love happening. Everyone always liked the new girl or the new boy. If they were halfway decent looking, it was just like everyone was crushing on them. They didn't know them from a can of paint. They're just new. It wasn't all that, well, I'll only like him if he really shows me that he's a good person. I don't know what school, where that is. I, that's just not where I experienced it. I changed schools a lot when I was growing up because I'm a military kid. I'm an army brat. So every school that I went to was pretty much the same when it came to that and there was a lot of insta-love which is why I don't fault books for insta-love. However, the dialogue in this story to me felt a little off. It wasn't that it was too pulled up or sophisticated or anything like that but there'd be moments where someone's telling someone a story. Hey I can't come out right now because my dad came earlier I was watching TV and he walked into the room. What are you doing? He said. I said yada 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 and it's kind of weird because when you're telling someone a story you wouldn't say what are you doing my dad said you would just say my dad said what are you doing so little things like that but things that kind of you know you can really catch with your ear and I just wish that there was a little bit more character development and relationship development with the friends because I could see how everything was coming together and how the friends were supposed to be really close and how they're developing over time that is the relationships do show that this this is an entire semester it's pretty short and it's in a semester but somehow I wasn't seeing it I wasn't feeling feeling on the page there weren't enough instances I think of moments where I could point to and say this is when this relationship went to another level and that relationship went to another level so I was kind of missing that although overall I could see where the author was going with the story so that's why I'm kind of like in the middle with this book I like the premise of the story I liked where the story went as far as the entire story from beginning to middle to end one of the things that I thought was going to happen didn't happen so that was like a nice surprise because usually I guess the end but something in the execution was missing for me I still can't wait to read Meg Willister's The Interesting Cell. That is actually one of my top priorities for this year, the next, no, this year. I'm going to read it this year. And now we're going to get into my TBR for October, which consists of one physical book, The Diviners by Libba Bray. I cannot wait to read this. I have the ARC, as you guys already know. I don't really have to say what this is about because a lot of people have talked about it, and I discussed it at length as well in another video, but 1920s, esoteric stuff, psychics, ghosts, Race Relations, New York City. I'm down. Satin Island by Tom McCarthy. This is another book that's been shortlisted for the Man Booker Award. It's only 200 and so pages, and it's basically about a man who has been tasked with recording what human civilization is about. Kind of like being an anthropologist for our here and now. All of his observations and how it all comes together. I'm really interested in it. I don't know if I'm in the, really in the mood for it now. I have it for five more days from the library and they do announce the, the winner for the um, a Man Booker Award in I think 15 days, 10, 10 or 15 days. So I should probably go ahead and read it while I can. I didn't realize until I was looking up the author's name that there have been quite a few books of his that I want to read that I marked in my library wish list. I've been wanting to read him for a while and now it looks like I'm finally getting to it because I'm Man Bookering it. Another novel that was long listed but didn't make the short list for the man booker is Bill Clegg's Did You Ever Have a Family? This novelist is also a huge literary agent and he wrote books before about a memoir about his addiction to crack and his ups and downs and coming out of that. I'm sure he doesn't like everyone to always mention that. I mean he did write the memoir but I did when I was reading it and he said he understood that, that that would be the thing. And I was thinking, but I'm sure he doesn't want everyone to mention it every single time they mention his name. Like every time his name comes up, it's like, to crack addiction, to crack addiction, to crack addiction. And then I just, I was like, that he can't like that. And look, I just did it myself. I did it. I did it. And I probably won't edit it out because it is an interesting fact, but I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of like adding to the whole crack, crack, crack. Moving on. I don't know much about Did You Ever Have a Family? All I know, all I want to know, there's one woman whose whole family is killed in one incident. On the eve or evening after or the day after, her daughter's wedding, her daughter, her daughter's new husband, the woman's ex-husband, so the father of the bride, and the woman's boyfriend are all killed in one fell swoop. Hence the title, Did You Ever Have a Family? Although it didn't make the short list for the man booker, I believe it is on the long list for the National Book Award. It also sounds like a fantastic story. I'm a little 
frightened to read this, but I can't wait. Plus I have it from the library and I need to read it before it, it disappears. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This story is about a family who has to deal with the death of their daughter, of one of their daughters. I believe they have two daughters and they are a biracial family, Chinese mother and a white father, although it could be the other way around. I think it is the other way around. And the story takes place in the 1970s. They're dealing with just being a biracial family and dealing with the loss of their daughter. I've heard nothing but great things about it. I, I was putting it off for a really long time because I, I just felt like I didn't want to cry and, and feel depressed and that kind of thing, but I think I'm ready now. I think I'm ready. Another book that I'm planning on reading this month is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas. I told you guys before that I loved The Assassin's Blade. It was such a wonderful, wonderful ride. I loved each story. I was so impressed by the world building, the emotions I was feeling. I can't wait to get into Throne of Glass because as you can see, I have the whole series <laughs> without starting book one, but I did read The Assassin's Blade which is the collection of novellas. So yes, the only reason why I don't have the Throne of Glass book one and why I'm reading it in ebook form from the library is because I did not like that first cover at all. I love the direction of the covers now. So until that first book comes out with a matching hardcover, I won't pick one up. Although I've heard people say that they are out there and you can go to, I think, Book Depository or Amazon. I'm just still like, oh, I don't want to think that I got the right one and then the old cover shows up. Not only a cover that I don't care for, but also doesn't match to boot. I don't know. I need to roll up in Bloomsbury and be like, I need this book. <laughs> so I'm very excited to read that. I will probably read that toward the end of the month because if things go according to plan, if I have enough time, I want to marathon the series from book one all the way through to book four. But I don't know if that's really going to happen because I just remembered that there was another book I wanted to get to. The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. I loved Freedom and I just recently purchased Purity. So, but I really want to read The Corrections first before getting to Purity. I tend to like to read books by an author in the order in which they were published because I like to see how they changed, how they grew, where they went as far as different directions, that kind of thing, trying different things. It, I just feel like it's just interesting and it's just kind of fun to do that. It's not a must, but it's just something that I'd like to do. So I may get to this. All I know is this is just a dissection, a study on a an American family. And if it's anything like freedom, it's probably hilarious. The thing about Jonathan Franzen is he gets this reputation for being a bit of a curmudgeon. And maybe sometimes he can be about technology and certain things. I think he has a very fun personality. In his novels, he's funny. And in his interviews, he's really funny. So yeah, I don't know. He seems like a pretty nice guy to me. So those were my September reads, my book buddy-a-thon wrap up, and also my October TBR. There's a lot. I really need some water. I'm very thirsty right now, so I'm going to get that. But before I go, I have to say thanks for watching this video, you guys. Please like the video if you liked it. Please share the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the books that I mentioned, and let me know what you're reading this month. And no spoilers, if you read Queen of Shadows, please. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you guys later.